The GTX 1070 and Vega 56 were both solid options back in 2017. But seven years on, which GPU is performing better? Is the GTX 1070 still taking that spot? Or has AMD Fine Wine kicked in and the RX Vega 56 is now king? To find out which one of these GPUs is actually better in 2024 though, I've put them up against each other in a benchmarking battle to finally put to rest which is conclusively the best graphics card. Theoretically, both of these GPUs should be very similar in terms of gaming performance. However, the specs on paper are wildly different. The only similarity they have is the actual amount of VRAM they've got, and that is eight gigabytes. And even then, they are wildly different because the Vega 56 has eight gigabytes of HBM2 memory, whereas the GTX 1070 has got eight gigabytes of the more conventional GDDR5. This allows for far more memory bandwidth on the Vega 56 as HBM2 memory is directly next to the GPU die. However, both of these graphics cards have full support for DirectX 12.1 at a feature level. So that means essentially every game should at least start on both of these, even though Alan Wake 2 might be a bit rough on both of these graphics cards, but Hey ho. The GTX 1070 model I have is the MSI Gaming X and it's a higher end model for the GTX 1070 and personally I think the Twin Throws 6 design of this MSI graphics card is one of the best ever made. Like literally GPU design peaked in 2016 and 2017. And for the Vega 56, I have the MSI Air Boost, and this is a solid Vega card as it is equipped with superior Samsung HBM2 memory which is far better with overclocking. And to be fair, it is a bit rough being a blower style cooler for a Vega 56, but it keeps the core around 72 degrees C, so there's not that much of a problem there. So if you bought either one of these graphics cards in 2017, or if you're just looking for a sub 100 pound budget graphics card, which is the better option in the modern day? To find out, I've tested them against each other at 1080p on my testing PC, which has an Intel Core i5 12400F, an MSI B660-A Pro motherboard, 32 gigabytes of dual rank, dual channel, 3200 megahertz DDR4 memory, and a one terabyte NVMe Gen 4 SSD. Both graphics cards have had some overclocking applied to the memory and the power sliders have been maxed out and they've both been tested with the latest release of their respective drivers at the time of testing. So let's see which one of these GPUs is the better buy in 2024. Kicking off the benchmarks today with Fortnite and the GTX 1070 bags a win here. Getting 214 FPS on average with a 1% low of 115 FPS is not bad performance on the low preset with DirectX 12. However, the Vega 56 doesn't trail it behind by too much, getting 199 FPS on average. However, the 1% lows are looking way better with the Vega card with 143 frames per second. So out of both these graphics cards for Fortnite, you can't really go wrong with either. However, the 1% low with the Vega 56 is looking more appealing than the better average with the GTX 1070. The GTX 1070 sees another win in Cyberpunk 2077, getting 54 FPS on average with a 1% low of 45 frames per second. Whereas the Vega 56 struggles with just 48 FPS on average and only 34 for the 1% low. So Vega is quite known to struggle in Cyberpunk and so does Pascal Truth be known. However, Cyberpunk is more playable on the GTX 1070. Hogwarts Legacy sees the balance shift massively in favor of the Vega 56 as that got 82 FPS on average with a 1% low of 60 FPS on the medium preset, which is great performance that is better than what I was expecting. However, the GTX 1070 does kind of struggle getting 64 FPS on average with a 1% low of just 40 FPS. So is Hogwarts Legacy playable on both these graphics cards? Certainly, but the RX Vega 56 is giving a better gaming experience here. AMD graphics cards do tend to perform very well in Forza Horizon 5 and that trend continues today with the Vega 56 getting 98 FPS on average with a 1% low of 80 frames per second which is all in all great performance. However the GTX 1070 does trail the Vega 56 by 15% with the average frame rate going down to 83 FPS on average 
with a 1% low of 68. On the high preset, this is playable performance on both of these graphics cards. But then again, the Vega 56 is giving a much better frame rate right here. So the Vega 56 is better in Forza Horizon 5. It was like splitting hairs in Rainbow Six Siege on the medium preset. That is because the Vega 56 is just 5% better than the GTX 1070. 284 FPS on average with a 1% low of 193. That is perfect for a 240 Hz experience. And then again, the GTX 1070 is also perfect for this as it got 271 FPS on average with a 1% low of 193. Yes, the Vega 56 does perform better in Rainbow Six Siege, but if you had them both running side by side, I don't think you'd notice the difference at all. So go with whichever is probably cheaper in your region. That story stays true with F123 as there is just a 5% performance delta in favor of the RX Vega 56 as that got 125 FPS on average with a 1% low of 103. This is great performance on the medium preset and I'll probably just leave it at this on both graphics cards. That is because the 1070 got 119 FPS on average with a 1% low of 100 FPS. Yet again, it's like splitting hairs with both of these graphics cards. You can't go wrong with either. As expected, the Vega 56 is a superior card in Doom Eternal, getting 146 FPS on average with a 1% low of 125. This is excellent performance right here, and I suspect the HBM2 memory of the Vega 56 is certainly lending it a helping hand. The GTX 1070 does trail behind getting 128 FPS on average, and the 1% low does drop to double digit, getting 91 frames per second. So if you want to play Doom Eternal on a relatively cheap graphics card, the Vega 56 is the GPU for you. The last game I'm specifically taking a look at today is Spider-Man Remastered and performance on both graphics cards here is totally fine, truth be known, but the GTX 1070 does bag another win. Getting 87 FPS on average with a 1% low of 59 frames per second is pretty decent performance if you ask me. And the Vega 56 only trails behind by about 6% getting 82 FPS on average with a 1% low of 54 frames per second. And this has become a bit of a trend in today's video. It's like splitting hairs between both of these graphics cards as performance on both of them is pretty great. So both of these graphics cards perform very closely over the 11 games tested today and there's only a 5% performance uplift in favor of the Vega 56. But I think both of these graphics cards have shown that they are still capable at 1080p entry level gaming. Especially if you don't mind lowering the settings down to medium, that 8GB of VRAM on them is really not going to be a problem and they still have the horsepower to push out some decent frames. However, the Vega 56 does lead the GTX 1070 by 6% in the 11 games tested today and it scored some big wins in Hogwarts Legacy and Forza Horizon 5. But in Fortnite, Cyberpunk and Spider-Man Remastered, the GTX 1070 does claw a few wins back right there so it's kind of dependent on which game you want to play. There is one big elephant in the room though with the Vega 56 and that is power consumption. It consumed a massive 248 watts after an undervolt and it's no longer being fully supported by AMD's driver team. Both of these are issues which the GTX 1070 does not face as graphics cards as old as the GTX 750 Ti which is 11 years old now almost is still supported so Pascal's got quite a lot of time left in it. Also, the GTX 1070 only consumed about 199 watts, which is a lot less than the Vega 56. Right then, the trade blows with each other, and there's only a bit of a performance uplift overall with the Vega 56. But which GPU out of these two should you spend your hard-earned money on? And that is a very hard question, as it is always but I'm going to try and narrow it down for you. The GTX 1070 has superior levels of efficiency, better driver support, and it has CUDA acceleration as well. So if you want to do any work with your PC, the GTX 1070 is going to be much better for that as CUDA does work quite well in programs like Adobe's Premiere Pro. Also, if you wanted to play games like Fortnite and Cyberpunk, Nvidia always seem to outperform their AMD counterparts in these titles, so the Nvidia card is the one I'd recommend if you primarily want to play Fortnite 
or Cyberpunk. On the other hand, the Vega 56 is overall slightly more powerful in games, being just 6% quicker in the 11 games tested today. But it did see some massive wins today with Hogwarts Legacy gaining up to 29% performance on average. And I suspect this is down to a memory bandwidth issue with the 1070 because HBM2 has far higher memory bandwidth. But I do have to state this, the biggest problem with the RX Vega 56 is its power consumption. This thing absolutely gobbles power, consuming 248 watts in my gaming test today. And that is a lot more than the GTX 1070. And as I previously mentioned, the Vega 56 is no longer actively supported by AMD, but it's not technically discontinued with driver support yet. But that is in a video which you can watch up here. In terms of used pricing, both of these graphics cards often sell for less than £100 on the used market. Even though the Vega 56 can be found at a bit of a discount compared to the GTX 1070, just because Nvidia does have that GeForce branding, which is a bit stronger than AMD's Radeon branding, and that's just the way things are. I've got both of these graphics cards for just over £80, which I think is a pretty decent deal for both of them. I wouldn't spend anything over £100 for either of these graphics cards. Right, long story short, if you need CUDA acceleration or efficiency is your concern or Fortnite is going to be the main game that you're going to be playing, the GTX 1070 is the graphics card for you. If you want a cheaper, more powerful graphics card but you don't really care that much about the power consumption, the RX Vega 56 is a better GPU than the GTX 1070. So I hope that clears things up and if you want to see more GPU videos there are two right up here which might be right up your alley and if you got this far into the video I'd like to say thank you for sticking around this long it does really help out and if you really like the video consider leaving the video a like. With that being said I'll catch you in the next one and have a good rest of your day.